Senator Amy Marcos says she doubts her younger brother, President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. would meddle in the fight for Senate President in the next 19th Congress. Oh, it's most unlikely and quite improper, as uh, you're well aware, the separation of the three branches of government. Hindi po tayo nanghihimasok sa executive. Ang executive, hindi tapakialaman ng judiciary and so on and so forth. Kasi hindi naman siya tama, di ba? The emerging frontrunners for the Senate presidency, Senate Majority Leader Juan Miguel Zubiri and Senator Cynthia Villar are known Marcos allies. An aspiring candidate for Senate President must get at least 13 votes among the 24 members of the chamber to secure victory. Senators usually choose their own leader, but an endorsement from Marcos would give an advantage to whoever is seeking the next Senate presidency. But Amy says it is important that a supermajority coalition be formed under her brother's term, regardless of who becomes Senate President, and says we need a Senate unity. President Rodrigo Duterte holds the 54th and last full cabinet meeting under his administration. This is also the first full cabinet meeting in two years since the COVID-19 pandemic began. In a briefing, Acting Cabinet Secretary Melvin Matibag says how grateful the President was during the meeting. Nagpasalamat na lang talaga and it's been during the cabinet meeting, I repeatedly heard him saying na hindi ako nagkamali sa mga pinili ko ng miyembro ng kabinete. Matibag also says cabinet clusters presented reports and discussed recommendations that departments have for the incoming Marcos administration. Matibag emphasizes that though it was the last cabinet meeting, the work did not stop that night as Duterte still has directives for implementation. Duterte also hosted a Thanksgiving dinner for cabinet members and their spouses after the meeting. Duterte will step down as the 16th Philippine president at noon on June 30, the day President-elect Marcos takes his oath as the next chief executive. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Incoming Department of Migrant Workers Secretary Susan Tuts Ople aims to conduct a systems review to improve how the government caters to overseas Filipino workers. In a Rappler Talk interview Monday, May 30, Ople explains her plans once she sits as DMW chief, one of which is to hold virtual town hall meetings with overseas Filipino workers. Opla says she met with President-elect Ferdinand Marcos Jr. to discuss his marching orders for her department. The marching orders were to look after not just the OFWs, but also to develop some programs uh, for the families, especially the children um, who have been left behind. He is also very much um, uh, interested in the kind of data that would help us formulate policies, in both in the short term and long term. Aside from Marcos's orders, Ople says she also plans to improve the Philippine Overseas Labor Offices abroad by ensuring that better qualified people will be appointed to man them. She also wants to improve the database of blacklisted OFW employers so they will never be able to hire Filipinos again. OPLA plans to ensure OFW contracts with employers include provisions from bilateral labor agreements that safeguard their rights. OPLA is a longtime OFW rights advocate. Watch your full interview on Rappler social media platforms. The World Health Organization does not believe the monkeypox outbreak outside Africa will lead to a global pandemic. Rosamund Lewis, technical lead for monkeypox from the WHO Health Emergencies Program, says it remains unclear if infected people who are not displaying symptoms can transmit the disease. More than 300 suspected and confirmed cases of monkeypox have been reported in May, mostly in Europe. 
Monkeypox is a usually mild illness that spreads through close contact, causing flu-like symptoms and a distinctive rash. No deaths have been reported so far for monkeypox. Scientists are looking into what might explain this unusual upsurge of cases. The Mona Lisa is left unharmed after a visitor to the Louvre smears the world's most famous painting with cream in an apparent climate-related publicity stunt on Sunday, March 29. The perpetrator was a man disguised as an old lady who jumped out of a wheelchair. The author of a video of the incident's aftermath says the man also threw roses everywhere before being tackled by security. In another video posted by an onlooker, as the perpetrator is led away by security, he talks about the earth and people destroying the earth in French, indicating the incident likely had an environmentalist motive. The Louvre was not immediately available for comment. <laughs> <laughs> 